are a few theories about why humor is not as valued as it should be, at least in Christian circles. And I think the reasons start at the very beginning. For example, have you ever thought of why we don't think of Jesus of Nazareth as an overtly funny guy, right? Well, I'm working on this book on humor, and as part of the research for it, I spoke to a number of scripture scholars, including Dan Harrington at, uh, at STM, and they all said more or less the same thing. For the first part, um, our humor is very culture-bound, right? So if you know someone who is, for example, Hispanic, the humor is slightly different, right? It's also time-bound. Something that was funny in the 1920s may not be funny now. So imagine the difference between first century Palestine and 21st century Boston. We probably don't get the jokes. <laughs> Father Harrington told me that in first century Palestine, the setup was more funny, right? The idea that someone would have a plank in their eye and the other person would have a speck of dust in theirs was funny, ha ha funny. Not just like, oh, isn't that clever, but ha ha funny, they would laugh at that. But we don't get that. Also, we've heard these stories so many times that they become like, as one scholar said, an old coin that has lost its edges. We, we've heard the stories, it's like one of my father's favorite jokes. My dad died in 2001 and he was a great storyteller and he used to tell the joke of the guy who goes into a prison for the first time uh, and uh, he sits down at the, um, I almost said the refectory, that's Freudian slip. Um, <laughs> he sits down at the dining room table and uh, sits next to an older guy and some guy jumps up and yells out 125, everybody laughs. Another guy jumps up 362, burst of laughter. Another guy 75, oh, people just, peals of laughter. So the young guy says to the old guy, what's going on? And the old guy says, well, you know, we've lived together for so long, we know one another's jokes, so we've assigned them numbers. <laughs> and so when someone jumps up, they say the joke, we remember it, we laugh, and it saves us time. <laughs> and he says, you try it. And so the guy says, well, I don't know any of the jokes. And he says, it doesn't matter. There's 500 of them. Just say a number between 1 and 500. So the guy jumps up, and he says, 26. Silence, crickets. He sits back down and he says to the old guy, what happened? And the old guy says, well, some people can tell a joke, some people can't. <laughs> so, you know, we've heard these stories so many times that they lose their humor. For example, take the story of Nathaniel. Raise your hands if you remember who Nathaniel is. Come on, this is BC. There we go. Nathaniel was the guy, you'll recall, who's sitting under a tree and Jesus walks by and two of the disciples say, there is the Messiah, he is from Nazareth. And Nathaniel says, can anything good come from Nazareth? It's like saying, can anything good come from Boston, right? Oh, now you laugh a little at that. Why is that? Because that's new to you. But you've heard, can anything good come from Nazareth so many times, do you laugh? What do you say in response to that? You say, praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. <laughs> We miss that humor. And that humor shows three things. Number one, Jesus had a sense of humor. Anyone who told clever stories and funny parables and frankly put up with the disciples must have had a sense of humor. You know, in fact, I think if we think about it theologically, uh, Father Massa would appreciate this, you know, as an STM grad, if we think about it theologically and we think about Jesus as fully human, what kind of a person does not have a sense of humor that is not a fully human person? So you could go out on a limb and say, thinking of Jesus without a sense of humor is close to heretical, right? But here's the little proof in the Gospels, a little bit of proof. What does Jesus say in response to Nathaniel's little dig? Now the dour, grumpy, depressed Jesus that most of us think of would say, make not fun of the poor town of Nazareth, Nathaniel. You know, it will go better for you on the day of judgment. No, he does not. He says, now there is an Israelite without guile. There's someone I can trust, and he invites him to join the apostles. So there's a little indication Jesus had a sense of humor and appreciated it. It shows Nathaniel had a sense of humor, and it shows that the evangelist, the person who wrote the gospel, had a sense of humor. He preserved that little story for, 2000, for us for 2,000 years because of his sense of humor. So I think we need to return to this idea of Jesus as a holy and holy funny guy who must have laughed. 